All right, up next, uh, an Athens treasure returned here, uh, and this time did important historic preservation in the process. So many of you may remember Square One Fish from their prior location um, that has since uh, been demolished uh, and replaced with the hotel next to the Classic Center. Uh, they were a beloved local seafood restaurant and decided to return. And when they did, they uh, returned to the heart of Normaltown and in doing so have earned this award for outstanding adaptive reuse. Um, so uh, you can see here that when they purchased the former home of PM Army Store in Normaltown, uh, they rolled up their sleeves and got to work reimagining the space for their restaurant, Square One Fish Company. After a top to bottom cleaning, they set to work laying new wood floors over PM's outdated vinyl tile and setting up the kitchen. Uh, the mid century building's history can still be seen in its plaster walls and original bathroom at the back of the kitchen, but the new drywall and the ceilings and bar salvaged from Square One's previous space give new life to the space. Um, so we're, we're thrilled to present this award uh, to the owners of Square One Fish, to Joe and Sean. Thank you so much. And as a fun fact, the chef's table room includes an homage uh to the uh to an old fireplace in the space so we're thrilled to celebrate square one fish for outstanding adaptive reuse um at this time i am going to let's see maybe tommy has a photo or something of square one fish company uh for our ad, uh, outstanding adaptive reuse where they uh took over the space for uh in the p and m army store Many of y'all may be familiar with that store in Normaltown. Um, and that uh, is pretty exciting to have uh, a restaurant in that area. And I know that the residents in that area are glad of that as well as we are in Athens to have Square One Fish Company back with us. Um, well, maybe while we're waiting on, well, there's a photo there. Very good. Okay, so an interior shot. So, um, Perhaps now we could uh, bring on uh, Erica and Joe Cassio as owners of Square One Fish Company. There you are. Hello. <laughs> okay. I can't quite hear you yet. So. Okay. Oh, there we go. I got okay. you. I can hear you now. How are you, David? I'm just great. Thank you all for uh, taking time to be with me tonight on this. And uh, so Joe and Erica Cassio are owners of Square One Fish Company, um, along with Sean Fallows, right? Yes, my partner, yes. Sean, yes. Very good. So we'll, we'll be talking a little bit about him as we, as we get into this. So we're, this is your second round in Athens. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, okay, so many, many of uh, our audience will remember that Square One first came to Athens and I think you said something like 2007. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. correct. Yes. Okay. And they were located on uh, North Avenue uh, next door to uh, the yeah, classic, uh, center. classic Center. And um, so we had many good years of that. We all love that. But uh, as it would be that you close that down and now you are back and back in Athens and happily so. We're glad to have you back. Well, thank you. Yeah, so um, so you are now located in the former uh, P and M Army Store, and uh, tell us about your choice or about finding this location, and also tell us a little bit about the fact that you you decided to come back to Athens. Okay, um, basically we had sold the last property to the Hyatt, yeah. and uh, I went down. I was down in the Keys guiding down there fishing. And um, as I was visiting up in Athens at one time, my house in Winterville, um, a good friend of mine, Pete Carson from Carson's Plumbing, had told me that his uncle had passed away and this property was probably going to be for sale. So um, I asked him to leave me a key so I can come in and look at the P&M Army store. And um, I contacted our old chef at the old square one and asked him if he'd be interested in partnering with me on this because I'm at, at 58 years old. I'm a little too old to be running a restaurant all by myself. So um, I decided to uh, talk to him about it. And uh, we came in and looked around and um, I, I kind of sketched up some plans on what I wanted it to, you know, kind of look like and stuff. And at that point I spoke to a, uh, 
English construction, Brent English. And I brought him in here and got his opinion on some of the build out. Um, and uh, we all kind of put a deal together on the property. So it worked out pretty good for all three of us. Um, and in the restaurant end, it's just um, Sean and I. And um, in the building end, the building end of it would be a part of Brent has a piece of it. I have a piece of it. And so does Sean. Right. So um, it kind of all worked out good for everybody because the way I build restaurants and when I do them, I like to do them as cheap as possible. And, <laughs> Inexpensive. Yeah. Well, <laughs> this, build out, this build out was done for. Inexpensively. It's not cheap. <laughs> it was it was done for under 200000 and that's including all restaurant equipment. That's amazing. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty good build out. And um, I kind of, we have kind of a good knack a on local, doing that. A lot of local materials. Yeah, a lot of local materials and a lot of different finds and stuff like that. Um, we didn't really have too much from the old square one except for our bar top. Which and was from our property. That's from our property, the, the, the yeah. trees that we built for the last one. And I just, we just reshaped it and used it here. Okay. But all the rest, of the, all the rest of this stuff is basically reclaimed. That's great. That's fantastic. So um, I'm sure you walked into the P and M Army store and said, "This is just the perfect place. It doesn't need anything." <laughs> yeah, just, a, just a coat of paint. Just a coat of paint. And uh, coat of paint, man, ready to go. And mop the floors, right? <laughs> exactly. So, judging from the interior, that pictures and uh, of this of this space. It looks like you had to do a little bit of work, but it looks, I mean, it really gives you the feeling of, I don't know, being in the, to me, being at a, a fish restaurant at the coast. I yeah, mean, well, you know, being a boat captain, fishing in my whole life, and, and also a chef most of my life, I, all my restaurants are kind of themed like that. And, um, you know, I when you come in here, we usually have some Caribbean music playing. Our menu is usually like a, I call it kind of a Floribian cuisine. You know, like tonight we have hogfish, we have a uh, black belly rose fish and uh, you know, just a lot of different things like that. And uh, lo locally fish from Georgia is kind of hard to do sometimes. Yeah. So we kind of get a lot of our stuff out of uh, Florida. Sure. Yeah, well, that makes sense. That makes sense. So how's it been to be back home in Athens again? Well, <laughs> this was a curveball. Okay. So I've been through a bunch of hurricanes and stuff like that. Never a pandemic. Ah. So this is a new one for me. I mean, uh, this location was on track for having a phenomenal year until the pandemic happened, but now we're back on course again. So no. That's it's, uh, it, it's working out very well. Well, good. So y'all have been able to reopen under the guidelines and you're back open. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. Well, um, I was wondering too, uh, if you, um, a little bit about your other restaurants. I mean, you have, this is not your only rodeo for sure. No. Um, I started, uh, my first restaurant was Joe's Riverside Grill in Pompano in 1993. And we ran that restaurant for almost 20 years. And uh, when we had came up here, um, we were looking to buy property. And that's how we ended up at that first Thomas Street location. Right. And... Um, you know, because down in down in Pompano, Fort Lauderdale, where I'm from, I couldn't really afford to buy the property to open a restaurant. So I didn't want to lease anything anymore. I wanted to own the property. So that's what we did. And uh, it kind of worked out well for us on that first one. So uh, hopefully this one will, you know, in the future will pan out about the same way. Well, that, I you think, know. yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's really, really great because uh, I think that I'm sure that the residents in normal town, I mean, you, there've been a lot of changes in this area since you were yeah. here in 2007. And so you can see with the major residential area and all of that kind of thing going on. So um, I, it's really become a residential hub back behind there. And so I know mm -hmm. they're delighted to have that extra, um, uh, extra restaurant to be able to go to and walk to 
it's a yeah. pedestrian walk to to get to that restaurant right so erica how is it being married to joe castillo <laughs> he, clearly, he clearly married above himself here so uh, <laughs> listen our time slot is too short to field that question but thank you for asking it <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. So tell us a little bit about your uh, partnership with Sean Fellows. Uh, well, Sean and I are also very good friends. And um, when Sean was our chef at the last square one, him, him and I, uh, we, we bonded pretty good and we worked very well together in the kitchen. And um, so that's what, when I, when I was thinking about bringing him on as a partner, it, it, it kind of really uh, made my life a lot easier because he is a phenomenal person, a great chef, and um, he's very talented. Very talented. And the guy just—I mean—he works as hard as I do. We work. We we cover each other's back the whole time, so it makes it a lot easier. Well, uh, you know, a partnership can mean everything, right? Yeah, it's it's a very important thing, and there's very few people I would do a partnership with. Uh, yeah, he's great. I totally, I totally understand that. So what made you uh, decide to go into the restaurant business? I mean, were you just a blood punishment or is that just something you've always had to do? Well, I was, it was better hard labor. Yeah. I was in the Marine Corps and um, when I got out of the Marine Corps, I started a roofing job that lasted about four hours. Oh, that'll do it. So, and I, um, I started to cook and, um, that's kind of where it came from. And um, a very good friend, friend of mine, Gerhardt Groma, he owns a restaurant in um, South, Carolina. South Carolina. It's called Gerhardt's. And uh, he, he uh, classically trained me on uh, being a chef. And um, uh, it was a really a school of hard knocks. It was at like this restaurant in Fort Lauderdale that in the 70s and 80s was an absolute institution. Yeah, it was doing at that point yeah. 13, 14 million a year. So we was, learned how to do it, you know, learned how to pump food out. But well, it was but a really well, good place. Yeah. yeah. And um, you know, I still till this day I still talk to him and thank him for everything he's talking. He was and he was trained in Austria. So yeah. Gerhard came here and then Joe and Gerhard worked together for years. So. Yeah. That's good. That, are you originally from Florida? Yeah, I was born in New York. I moved to Florida when I was like eight years old. Okay. So I was kind of raised in South Florida. So right. you know, fishing, boating my whole life. That's home. That's home. Yeah, that's home to me. Yeah, and Erica, where are you from? I'm a native New Yorker. Okay. So I, get, I was dragged to Florida kicking and screaming by my parents at some point, and then I met Joe and I stayed. <laughs> but yeah, it was definitely not my first choice. Okay, that's great, that's great. So I, I, I see we have someone in the audience that was saying hi, was that a Lauren Cassio? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, not a Lauren. She said not to, but we will anyway. <laughs> yeah, the Lauren Cassio. Yeah, right. Oh, and her nice. picture. Yeah. There you go. Hi, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> she said, "Don't answer that." I probably did not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll answer that. Um, so, tell me a little bit about bringing Brent English in. I've known Brent a long time. He's a great guy. And um, oh, Brent's a great guy. We've been friends, and um, uh, you know, like I said, when it comes time to. Um, you know, managing and putting deals together. I like to, you know, try to get the best deals for everybody. You going out that way? Thank you. Um, so I like to try to get the, um, you know, the best deals going for everybody and let everybody make some money on a deal. Right. And uh, it seems to be working out good. And I learned a lot from Brent in this build out, which, you know, we did the last build out over there with a different person from Florida. Right. And um, this worked out pretty good. Well, you he's, know, for the, for the uh, expenses yeah. that we paid doing. Well, he's a very talented guy, and I know that he uh, oh, yeah. was very um, helpful in coming up with that. So, I mean, who did the who did the interior? Who did the? I mean, the uh, interior we did. and all that. Yeah, we did. Do you mean the decorating? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, all the, re all the reclaimed wood and and flooring and walls and. We did all that, you know, we had drywall guys come in and, and do some of that work, contractors, but we did all the rest of it. All right. Well, uh, you know, I know that there was um, some discussion about the uh, 
<clears throat> the bead board ceiling and all that kind of thing. But I got to tell you that I think that the gypsum wallboard and sheetrock gave it a really fresh, light look up there. So I think that was a good call. Yeah. And uh, well, the and bead, the bead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that uh, it, not only from the standpoint of the freshness of the interior, but I know there's a lot of uh, uh, code issues and things like that that you come up with when you don't have a good cleanable surface like that. So it seems, I mean, right. like it works really well. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so Erica, did you have a hand in the interior design or the picking out of colors or I don't know? Um, I, worked with, I, I really didn't get too involved in the project as he was building it. Um, he, it's, it's his baby this time around. And so I, I, I know that he's going to make good choices. Um, may, I think I was actually, uh, when they were finishing, I wasn't even in town. I was visiting my daughter and uh, she and I were, uh, were, probably sending a million texts a day about what we thought he should do and shouldn't do and pictures of things that we liked, but he, he did a great job. He, he doesn't need my input for stuff like that. Well, it looks great. I love the, uh, I love the exposing some of the, the brick through the plaster and okay. Yeah. So who was it to put the United States up there? I like that. That was me. Ah, way to go, Joe. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that looks good. It looks really good. Yeah, I, I thought it was pretty sharp, and you know, it's just a little mini jackhammer, and you can go right to it. And there you go. It was a simple way to uh, take care of a boring wall. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, well, I really want to thank y'all for um, being a part of this show. I want to congratulate you on uh, receiving the uh, outstanding uh, adaptive ring. Well, thank you. We are just uh, again very very happy to have you back in athens and um wish you the very best and i'm looking forward to getting a little bit beyond this pandemic and things come back full force but i'm glad you're reopened and uh thank you again for for being with us tonight 